Okay, uh, quite different for me. I'm going to have a little introduction this time. And this is mine and Lizzie's look at all the Galavant fragrances. And the second one we have coming up is, of course, Amsterdam. So hello and welcome to Amsterdam. Hello, Ijun. Welcome in Amsterdam. It's probably wrong. Don't kill me if I pronounce that wrong. Now, Amsterdam is obviously a very famous city, a very popular tourist destination in a very beautiful part of Europe and is the capital city of the Netherlands. But things you might not have known about Amsterdam is it was actually the home of the first stock exchange um, over three, four hundred years ago now. Obviously there's the beautiful museums like the Rijksmuseum and there's um, the Van Gogh Museum and obviously Speaking for myself, I have a great admiration of Van Gogh as one of my favourite fine artists. But also, there's actually a little houseboat that's dedicated to cats and it's called the Cat Boat. And that's just for caring for lost cats and trying to rehome them. And as a cat lover, I think that's pretty great. Now, before I go on to the fragrance, obviously my, um, <laughs> my props are all full this time. There's a, there's a cow, because obviously Dutch eat a lot of cheese. And beer is famous amongst most of us European countries. So, Amsterdam. Now, it's described as a floral, spicy, woody, ambery fragrance. Is it? Maybe. We'll get into that. And uh, the kind of uh, scenery, the influence, the picture behind it is, is the idea of cycling past some old spice warehouses on a warm day by the canals you get all them traditional beautiful smells of that historic part of the city before an evening in having cake in a lovely wooden cabin wooden furniture that cozy smell of some beautiful dark flowers dark tulips which is obviously quintessentially part of dutch history and dutch culture i won't go into my, <laughs> my tulip story don't worry so yes anyway that's my little introduction done so next okay so the review don't want to sort of waffle on too much obviously because lizzie's got to fit something in but for me this this kind of opens up with a deep sweet lovely floral feel and some spices and i'm suspecting the spices are kind of the peppers and stuff let's give it another spray yeah there's a um, yeah, a lot of pepper and it's, it's very deep and rich and it smells very sort of red florals to me. But also, as it sort of settles, you know, after a couple of minutes or so, there's, yeah, there's definitely a kind of, to me, and in the dry down, a kind of almondry, almond, almondy texture. I said that right there. Um, and what it makes me think of is a bit like actually it's described perhaps not on a bike because I'm not much a biker but I get kind of like a a little bit of a fresh kind of maybe slightly green which makes me think of walking through like a fruit market more than a floral market because if you go if you go into like um, a fruit store and that they smell very fruity very sweet but they have that kind of lovely fresh greenness about them but as it keeps on going on um, you, you're looking 20 30 minutes into it then it starts to deepen a lot more so it's get a lot more beautiful and along with that almondy crumbliness i don't know if it's almond but it's what it makes me think of maybe this heliotrope but anyway as i was saying as, as it kind of develops there is a slight fizz it's not like an aldehyde, aldehydic fizz but it's quite a it's quite a fizz that stops it being very powdery. Although I don't see it as powdery as more as crumbly. And I'm walking. like I say, as you get to about that half an hour, an hour kind of thing, this again, like Tokyo, doesn't doesn't change massively. But it's not meant to. These are meant to be fragrances that are very easy to wear, very easy to understand. 
but just fragrances to make you smell good and take you on this experience of traveling around but it does to me anyway get a lot more deeper and a lot more darker maybe not the word but a lot richer as i presume it's the almond uh, the amber coming through and the almond is is still there it's still the backbone well it's not almond but whatever it is maybe that's what tulips smell like i can't remember smelling tulips but there's also a very dark rose giving it this jammy feel and it keeps on going on and two three hours you get like a nice little bubble it's probably coming about that much off the skin it, but you can smell it round you as you walk round it's not a beast it's not meant to be this is like like he says this is like your cozy little cabin in a room and you've got them beautiful soft wafts of the florals around you. I've kept it quite brief because Lizzie's more so the wordsmith with speaking than I am but um, I do as you can see I've gone through quite a lot of this now I do um, like this perhaps a bit more than Tokyo it's very different you can't really compare them but this will be my favorite so far and um, yeah it, each time I've worn it, it's been slightly different. Maybe sometimes I've picked out a bit more of the greener nuances. And other times it's been much kind of warmer. But again, it depends on what we're doing, doesn't it? And this has only been, what is this, uh, sort of the third full day, fourth maybe. And it's you need a bit more time with fragrances to decide, I think. But from these days... This is a lot more easy to understand than Tokyo. I love this one. I really, really do enjoy this one. And if that, that kind of um, almondy feel is the um, tulips, then I'm going to have to try and smell more tulips. Anyway, I have waffled and rambled on. So over to you, Lizzie. What did you get? Oh, oh, okay, I forgot to do something, didn't I? Which is choose the next one. So there's Amsterdam. And there's Tokyo. Put them there. To do this quickly. I don't know what they all are. Totally blind, you can see they're upside down, so I don't know what I'm doing. I'll reach away and we'll go for that one which is, that's what we're doing next, Lizzie. Brooklyn. Brooklyn Braver. No. Right, Brooklyn. Right. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Rose and Jones, and welcome to episode two of Lizzie and John's Let's Go Gallivanting, or Let's Gallivant. Rose and Jones around the world. Gallivanting with roses and snowdrops. <clears throat> Lizzie and John review the house of Gallivant. Okay, so let's thank John firstly for welcoming us into this perfume review. And also, thank you so much for that lovely trivia about Amsterdam. Um, fun facts about Amsterdam. I'm not well-travelled and I'm very uneducated when it comes to anywhere around the world. I really am. All I can do is be very cliche and say that all I can think of with Amsterdam is clogs and tulips and possibly weed. And of course we are reviewing Amsterdam, as I'm sure you've already figured out by John's fantastic review. John, I want to say, go ahead, get done. <laughs> I really enjoyed your thoughts because there are some definite similarities, some, some parallels and some differences. So let's just go right ahead and jump into the review. My experience of Amsterdam is based on a good few days of wear. Today is the third day of me wearing this fragrance. The first day that I wore it, I didn't want to look at the notes at all. I didn't want any, you know, influence from anything. I just wanted to wear it and see where I ended up in my own thoughts. Notes will definitely influence how I feel about a fragrance. And sometimes it's best for everybody if you just give a, a very simple account of what you feel and think about a fragrance. In the opening, a big, fresh bouquet of white florals with a definite green touch, quite a sharp, sour touch of green. A really big bunch of white florals with lots of greenery. It could be literally any kind of white floral because it is so blended. It's a one big ambience of white florals. And the only flower that I probably would say I could detect in here is rose. I can see these white roses, you know, popped in and looking beautiful amongst all these other different flowers. And it's a bouquet that's been freshly bought from a, a flower market. The opening is my favourite 
part of the development of this fragrance. I love that it is so bright and it's actually quite sour. Almost reminding me of an aldehyde. Not quite Chanel number no. 5, but that sharp, sparkling, bright, fizzy effect. So John spoke of the opening being sweet, quite sweet, and he spoke of the spices and the pepper, and interestingly made a note of saying that it was a red floral. He's certainly right about the spices and pepper. It's not something I picked up on at all until I knew they were there. But there is, um, there is a peppery spiciness in the opening. It does amuse me somewhat that I'm picking up on more white florals and John isn't because John tends to be very focused on his love for jasmine and tuberose and a lot of the time he'll be convinced that there is a strong jasmine note in a fragrance when it isn't there, which I find really funny. And this time around it's me that's actually getting this more kind of, I won't say jasmine specifically, but certainly a hit of strong white florals. Like John, I find this to be doesn't have too much development in that for me I don't find this to have a mid I find it goes straight from the opening to the dry down as it develops into that dry down that fresh bright white floral with green definitely lifts away and the fizzy sourness remains and becomes chalky and that chalky becomes powdery and it remains that way throughout it's kind of effervescent and fizzy a chalky fizzy effervescent sensation with also a smooth undertone, like a creamy, warm undertone. Uh, John compared this to being like an almondy texture, which, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty accurate. It's another way, I suppose, of saying that it's, it's going powdery and going into that dry stage. He mentioned a vegetable market, which is interesting. I don't really get an, a vegetable market as such, but if it's to do with the fact that the green element has come through later on on his skin, then it, maybe it's coming from that. But I think he picks up on more depth in the dry down than me. He talked of being deeper and richer from that amber. And he talked about the rose being quite jammy. Which I have to say, I don't, I don't get at all. I find it um, quite a soft dry down with very little depth. And actually, I don't really enjoy the dry down. Only in the sense that it's not my style of fragrance. I actually really enjoy things that are edgy and quite sour and sharpen your senses or do something that gives you an impact on your senses and that's why I really enjoy the opening with a refreshing tonic to have it's on a summery day I think if the maybe the spicy peppers had been stronger in the dry down or that sour fizzy quality was stronger it had been more interesting with that very soft creamy base I'm going to jump through the notes quickly just so we've got a point of reference here so the top notes is elamai now elamai is a, a resin that comes from a tropical tree and it's used in like varnishes and aromatherapy and it's a really strong almost lemony scented resin also we have pepper and also is you in pepper pronounce that right saffron we've got mid notes of rose and tulip and then we've got base notes of cedar musk sandalwood and amber so clearly there was zero mention of any white florals in this. Yeah, those, those peppers that are in the opening there, like I say, I didn't pick up on them until I knew they were there, but it, there is a hint of spiciness. The saffron's interesting. It's usually a note that I don't tend to enjoy, but it can bring a really bitter, um, almost headachey uh, vibe. I think that's what's given me this very sour sensation, and I quite like that in this fragrance. Obviously, we've got rose and tulip there. Tulip, I'm not familiar with the scent. Rose, I did pick up on the rose. And also the, the base here is cedar and musk, sandalwood and amber, amber for warmth. And I guess the musk will be providing this sort of fluffy, powdery texture. Musk's going to be really, really hit and miss with me. And if it's a sort of cashmere warm feel, then I tend not to enjoy it. Overall, I do actually enjoy this fragrance. I do. I love the opening. I love that um, vibrant burst of green and sourness and fizz. And despite my, um, not dislike, but I'm not overly keen on that dry down, overall I still quite enjoy it. The invigorating bright quality this has does kind of put me in mind of another fragrance I do actually have, which is Lucky by Christian Dior. Lily of the Valley fragrance. So it is a very different thing. It's completely different. It's much more watery and much more simple. The mood I would be in when I actually do choose and reach for this fragrance would be the same mood I would be in to reach for Amsterdam. So I think that's it. That was my thoughts and feelings on Amsterdam, our second destination on our gallivanting travels. Thanks, John, for picking the next one, which, of course, is Brooklyn. Okay, so Brooklyn will be our destination for next week. I think this one's a lot of people's favourites, so yeah, I'm really keen to try that one. Anyway, I shall leave you there. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. Thank you, John, once again for a fantastic review and for sharing your experiences of the House of Gallivant with me and everyone. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.